think it was 49 when we moved out and went to 49 East 52nd Street, which was the original CBS radio building. And that's where I started doing most of my sessions. We had three studios in that building. And then finally in about 51, I finally was assigned to work at 30th Street, the big studio. Uh, if you don't know that, that was a great place. It's on the east side of 30th Street, between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. And it was an old Armenian church. And it was Mitch Miller's decision, yes or no. And he said, this is what I want. Because he was then the head of A&R. And he was a very active person, musically as well as himself. And so he said, but I have to tell you, when we start coming in here, I don't want anything changed. I mean, we had drapes hanging askew, floors and dirty and lots of dust and everything else. I want it just as is. Cause, and his explanation was, he goes, the corporate people will come in, they'll sand the floors, they'll wax the floors, they'll paint, do all things that's going to ruin what we want it for. Not for television, this is for audio. And so that's the way we did, and we never did change. I started when it was still monaural. Now most people don't think that's very important. But if you're a control man or audio engineer, you learn to mix the orchestra or whatever was in front of you in the studio so that it was complete then, not later, at that point. It was always my practice to have the rhythm section very close to each other. I tried not to use any kind of baffles, but some producers you have to work with, they, they're afraid if you don't have it, nothing's going to work. And then with that, I, they were in the center and on the left-hand side, if you're looking out, or if you're looking in as, as a conductor, I always had the string section on my left and his left, and the brass reeds, whatever, on the other cross, so they could all hear each other and yet not get into interfere too much with each other. Microphones, I was never one of those that wanted close micing. I always figured a section should sound like a section, and you cannot get that sound if you're using four, five, six microphones. It's impossible. The most I would put on a full string section would be two microphones and high so that they, you get that sound as it is up into the studio itself. I did, as time went on, have people say, well, I want to hear this closer and I want that closer. I said, that's fine. You just let me know. We can either do it with the musician himself as the soloist, if he wants to get closer to the mic or not. Or if not, then I can read and I'll, I know when he's going to do it and I'll, I'll do it physically. So it's up to you too. I, I particularly don't like to use multi-microphones. And that's the way I went. And most producers and, and conductors understood the problem. And so they would not argue unless the particular person himself insisted on either having a mic or get closer. And that's how I would handle that. The singer, I would, solos, I would always have right offside the piano because he'd be close to the rhythm section too. And he, the piano usually gives him the keys, the notes for himself, and that made it comfortable for that part. The chorus really is very important, but the soloist didn't have to hear the chorus basically, so I'd have them somewhere in front so they could see each other, looking at each other, and go that way. And that seemed to work. I never had any complaints from anyone. And uh, it's the old story, if something works, don't change it. And I believed in that. And I
continued that way. The last thing I did do before I formally retired was record Tony Bennett's album Perfectly Frank, which then became his big selling album and he became known again and he's 10 years later he's still going strong and I got involved with Frank because of his producer conductor Don Costa uh, yeah, who Don Costa was one of the, the men in the industry and he and I did so many dates together even though they were not Columbia dates but we got along beautifully and so when he mentioned that Frank was going to be in New York at a certain period of time. He said, I'd like to bring him down here. I said, that's fine with me. He said, yeah, but outsiders are not allowed. I said, that's true, but I'll tell you how to do it. And that's what he did. I told him who to call and everything else. And we got, it was never listed as Sinatra. It was some other name on the schedule. And uh, so that Mitch Miller and the rest of them didn't know that we were doing it. And one of the albums was the record of the trilogy. The, uh, there was a past, present, and future. I did the pres present. And included in that was the, the hit song, New York, New York. And so I felt great about it when it took off like a skyrocket. And so as I say, Frank was very good.